So Thaida is passionate about sharing the healing power of belly dance, using belly dance for joy. She has started Dance Pandemic through, the, through this COVID time, and she <laughs> uses the potential of belly dance in trauma healing. So Thaida, it's all you. Hello, thank you very much for introducing me and thank you very much for all the work you guys are doing to make this conference possible. What a big deal and thank you, thank you. This is amazing. So I'm just going to start straight away, I think, with my presentation because I have so many things to share and we don't have that much time and I tend to get distracted and speak about different things that are not straight on the on the presentation. I'm just going to share my screen here. So that's it. I hope you can see it. Okay, so we, I'm going to talk about the potential of belly dance in trauma healing based on the work that I have been doing. Um, but before I start, I would like to say that self-care goes first. That's you, you always the thing. Uh, in this talk and like talk workshop, I'm going to mention my work with asylum seekers, with domestic violence, with prisoners and uh, sexual abuse survivors. I'm just going to mention that I'm not going to show any upsetting uh, material, anything potentially uh, triggering, but in any case, uh, I swear sometimes, and I use some strong words, uh, so adult language, and also I'm going to be talking about this topic. So uh, if at any point anyone feels uncomfortable or upset, just please feel free to leave the workshop and take good care of yourself. Nothing all over the top, but that's a warning. So we're going to start with a little bit of a dance. We're going to stand up and we're going to just to shake uh, because we are all a little bit nervous here. Oh, where is my my arrow, Lita? Oh, I cannot find it to stop sharing. What I can it? stop your share. Yeah, there you go. here it is. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, doing a hip hit, which is a really nice belly dance movement. I'm just gonna put this slightly down, and the clue is to have your knees relaxed. So uh, uh, the screen's slightly here. Ah, oh, well, you wanna use your scarf? Cool, amazing. Uh, you need to have your knees relax. Yeah. And all we're going to do is just hitting side to side with your hips. So you're going to start changing your weight from one side to the other. You're going to feel that weight change just with your hips, trying to isolate the movement as much as you can. And it's purely side to side. So it's in this frontal plane. So if you see me from the side, I'm just going towards and away from you. Yeah. And now instead of just being that gentle, I'm just going to hit to the side. Hit, hit, hit. And as we don't have music, but we have all, we all have this internal rhythm, we can hit with rhythm. One, two, three, four, that's it. And try to isolate the movements as much as possible. One, two, three. And now we're gonna do a double hip hit. So you have a, a feeling of what belly dance could be. So it's gonna be one and two and one and two and to one side and the other side. And one, two, one, two. And now while we keep the hip uh, in motion, we're gonna try and coordinate this with very soft and very slow arms. So we're gonna go up with the arms. One, two, one, two. Now you cannot see my hands, but you know I, I have them here. And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is called hip hits. Okay, so I hope everyone uh, is enjoying this so far. That's one of the basic movements uh, we first teach in, in any belly dance class. I'm just going to share the screen again and carry on. So what are you going to learn today or what I'm going to share with you today is roughly uh, what is belly dance. We're going to talk about how can belly dance help in trauma recovery based on my own experience. Uh, I'm going to actually share a couple of um, scientific research around the topic. Why belly dance specifically instead of all the dance forms? Like what is about belly dance? In my personal experience working with asylum seekers, as I said before, domestic violence survivors and sexual abuse survivors. Um, and also some belly dance uh, fundamental movements to start your practice right now. 
and you already learned one of the movements. So yeah, as you said before, this is a pre-recorded session. So if you have any comments, questions, I'm always happy to engage myself uh, on, on my email or on my website, which is on screen right now, ola at dancepandemic.com. And I'm not taking the piece of anyone with the name of my project, Dance Pandemic. So let me introduce myself first. I, uh, my name is Taida Palma. I was born in Spain, but I lived in, I live in uh, London since 2014. I moved to London. Uh, I have a YouTube channel with a lot of subscribers that I'm very proud of. And I founded dancepandemic.com back in 2016. Uh, my family, I come from a very dysfunctional family and I was very severely bullied at school. So I know what I talk about when I talk about trauma from a very personal experiential uh, perspective. Uh, so I've been in therapy for a long time and also like this bullying thing had to do uh, with my non-normative body, which in dance, unfortunately, is still kind of punished, not having a normal normative body. So I talk from my own experience, but also from the experience of having shared dance with many other dancers and many students. Uh, aside from being a dance teacher and many other things, so I consider, I consider myself a feminist, I am a migrant, I am a woman, I am half of a biologist because I didn't finish the degree, and I'm currently uh, studying a psychologist degree, so I'm a psychologist in construction. I've been teaching belly dance and body awareness since 2001, that's almost 20 years, so I have a lot of experience with women from uh, all sorts of backgrounds. Uh, started dancing with five years and my personal experience with dance that I really want to uh, because it's very embodied <laughs> well as I told you like with this past trauma of me as I started experience dance I um, I joined a professional team to become a professional swimmer when I was around 13 and swimming for four hours training working out for four hours a day can be very boring so I started feeling my body and I started feeling the water as a, as a very, very mindful experience, feeling the water on my skin and feeling the wake of my body and feeling the trace of my movement behind me. So that's how I became aware that I was actually dancing. And that's the, that like a lot of sensations that I learned while I was training to become a swimmer a professional swimmer to compete to com to go to competitions a lot of the of the feelings and a lot of the expressions and a lot of my understanding of dance comes from that experience which is really cool i don't swim anymore just for fun i do it but yeah i've also practiced a lot west african dances which i love uh, flamenco and contemporary dance and some ballet as well <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and belly dance always gave me wings and I'm just here to say the flight with you all, with whoever is listening. What is belly dance? Belly dance is a very, very ancient dance form with a long history, history, but we don't have any documents because, you know, things that women do are not as important as things that men do. So we don't, we don't, and we, did, we didn't have in the past the power of writing and documenting our own history as women. So there, there is no clear documentation on belly dance. There is like these hieroglyphs from Egypt. There are like some figures. It's believed the origins of this dance is in Egypt. And then it, it kind of went divided in two. So you had the Awalim, uh, which were the dancers of the palace, kind of slave dancers, slave entertainers, not only dancers. And the owners of these women, they used to pay for like very expensive uh, training for them to become um, poets, musicians, dancers. So they, they kind of cultivated this dance form. And then you have another branch, which is uh, called the Gawasi, which could be uh, so-called the, the, the gypsies at that time because of, of the nomadic life they had and the... Um, and the, yeah, you know, fortune tellers and this guy, like they were uh, doing the circumcision and stuff like that, like very mystical things as well. And yeah, at one point, belly dance and dance, any dance form was forbidden in Egypt. So that went into like a sub world that nobody knew where was it. And then 
aid research in Paris in 90, I think, let me remember, 1898 or 1892, there was an, an universal exhibition in Paris. And uh, the Egyptian pavilion presented a belly dancer, like they wanted to like do like a Cairo street on Paris and they presented a belly dancer and they call it Danse du Ventre in, in French, which means belly dance literally. Uh, yeah, and it was a woman just with like a bra and, and like some skirt dancing exotically. And you know, all of this exotism. So now talking about exotism, I would like to give some cultural perspective on this. Just a note that I am a Westerner and I'm talking about all of this topic as a Westerner, as a Westerner. So there's a, a huge stereotyping of what belly dance is in, belly, in Western countries as it is in, in actually in Egypt. Uh, belly dance in, in Western countries sometimes is very related with ballet. Some people just say like, if you don't dance ballet, which is the base of everything, you cannot do belly dance, which is not true because they are like totally, they have totally different roots as has happened with, with um, West African dances. Uh, so that's it. There is a lot of appropriation. There is a lot of stuff going on there. I'm just talking from my own personal as a perspective as a Westerner. And yep, that's it. So the reality of belly dance in the Western countries is that belly dance is really, really bad perceived in Egypt. And after, there is like this thing, what we call the golden era, if you are interested in it, is when belly dancers started, started appearing, they were, they were featured in films in Egypt. So they, there were a lot of famous dancers in, in Cairo, in Egypt. But after that, then belly dance in Egypt in particular was very, very linked with prostitution and with sexual work in general. And Western countries kind of adopted, appropriate the dance. And it's actually, in my personal opinion, it's been a salvation of the dance itself, not wanting to present our, ourselves as, as saviors because we are not there, but it's kind of like taking that that heavy weight of being related with something that people is like no i'm not a dancer nobody nobody wants to say they are a dancer in in egypt because it's really really bad considered while still in well in western countries we have our stereotyping and our relationship with that thing but we are more open to this kind of to this art form. So how is actually dance? How is belly, like, what is the characteristic of belly dance? Belly, belly dance is a dance form with two main kind of movements. We have the um, very isolated movements and then the coordination and coming, yeah, tell me. I uh, just wanna suggest that you stop screen sharing so we see predominantly you because you're talking so much and it's so interesting and it's more better than the, just the screen share of your PowerPoint, if, if that's okay. Sure, of course. I thought you could see me on the sites in a small yeah, sidebar, but it seems like, I mean, you're moving, you're talking. Yeah. So, okay. I'm just going to put then this on the site and I'm just going to follow me, my, my presentation here. So I don't see myself now, but it's all right. So, um, yeah, I was saying that, but, um, uh, pa -pa -pa, where I was, uh, yeah, movement quality in belly dance. It's a dance, it's very, very soft. At the same time, it could be very sharp. Uh, it's pelvis centered. Most of the movements are around the pelvis. Uh, it requires a lot of isolation of different parts of the body. And as any other dance form, a lot of coordination. Belly dance is for everyone because it's not a very demanding dance form. It's not demanding with the body. Uh, I mean, in the in the sense that you are not going to ask a student to pull their leg up here as you would do in a in a ballet class over time, of course, eventually. But this doesn't mean that it's a simple dance. It's, it's very elaborated and it contains loads of cultural references. So it's mainly practiced by women, and this is an important uh, bit on what I'm going to speak uh, then. I, I'm going to speak about later. And now we have another moment to dance and to feel the dance of the spine because uh, we call it belly dance but when you move the pelvis and when you move the back 
actually what happens is that you are moving your spine. So we're going to do a movement. Stand up again. We're going to do a, a movement uh, named the camel. And it's all about the spine. So we're going, we're going to, I'm just going to demonstrate. The movement itself is this, yeah? And it's, it consists on um, isolating as much as you can every vertebrae, starting, starting more or less on the neck high and then going all the way down through your spine. As a mermaid swimming, as a dolphin swimming, as a mal mal uh, moving through the sea, okay? As the, like the whale movements, that's it. When you, when you do this movement, then you can feel, or you can be mindful about your spine moving forward and backward. And there is a big tendency usually to go either, let me see, I, I'm just gonna put this slightly down so you can see a little bit. There is a big tendency of, overarching your lower back, you don't need to go that one, that, that down. And there is also a tendency of overusing the head. We don't need that because we are focusing the movement here from the neck down. So the belly dance posture, that's it. Cool. The belly dance posture to do this movement will be with one arm up and the other one on the side. So I'm just going to give you my profile here. There you go. And you can play going down and going up, just bending your knees. And, it's, and trying to, as I said before, trying to isolate the movement as much as you can. You can also play and change over the other side. And it's just a pure movement that goes front and back and down. So feel your spine, make sure you're moving your spine. The whole spine is working here. If you see me from the side, you can see I'm mobilizing the whole spine. It's really cool, really nice to feel. There is another one. I'm just gonna give you <laughs> an extra movement, which is exactly the same motion, but it comes from the bottom. It's called the reverse. So you tuck your pelvis in and go all the way up and finish here. So you make this a cycle, which always start from the bottom and go up and ends up in your chest going up. That's it. Oh, amazing. How does this feel? <laughs> okay, let's carry on. <clears throat> um, the project Belly Dance for Joy, uh, it's, uh, it's a project that Charlotte de Sorge, uh, which is, uh, she is the director of Company of Dreams. I did an audition in 2017 here in London to join a belly, a belly dance company actually. And Charlotte de Sorge, the director had this uh, idea, uh, which was bringing uh, joy through belly dance lessons for free for them to women survivors of, of traumas like domestic violence, as we talk, sexual abuse survivors of um, and asylum seekers. And um, so I've been touching belly dance for three years. I think it was in 2017, we started with this project uh, until earlier this year, because we had to stop because of the, everything knows because of what. So that was the reason of that. And I start, I, I, the project consisted on just going. So me as a teacher, I was the main, lead, the main teacher of this project. Me as a teacher, they are showing up in their safe houses of these women or in their hostels where the refugees uh, first sleep when they first arrive to the UK, just speaking with the women and trying to engage them in a dance class once a week, normally, sometimes once every couple of weeks. And it's just us, just, just we didn't have any therapeutic intention. We never had like prosecuted any therapeutic goal because we were, that was not the goal. It was just bringing some joy and giving some like positivity to them. But we started seeing some results and we started receiving some uh, spontaneous testimonials from them. So um, I remember, for example, a lady saying uh, uh, that she has changed her regular counseling session so it doesn't clash with our belly dance lesson. Uh, this was in a safe house in South London. Really, that moment was really magical. Like, wow, I cannot believe this is that positive for you. It's just having fun for one hour. Uh, another lady, a refugee woman, told me that thanks to the belly dance lesson she was receiving uh, week by week, she was like kind of focused, like 
if I manage to focus during this class just to learn and follow the steps and follow the music, then I know I can focus during the whole week to do like all the hardcore paperwork that I have to do and all that stuff. And I can tell you that it's not an easy task to do paperwork and deal with bureaucracy when you are an asylum seeker. It's a difficult stuff. Apart from the backpack, from the trauma backpack, you, I'm talking about people who travel half of the world, running away from wars, Maybe they have lost uh, family members, they have lost their houses, like the whole sense of identity is like, I'm not, I'm not a specialist in trauma, but I know what I talk about. And, I, and if you are in this conference, you probably are at least trauma informed. So I'm not going to give you any information on that because I don't think it's, it's worth it. You, you have many other experts speaking about that. But yeah. And then I remember one of the social workers as well, uh, telling us or well, telling me in particular like how important was for the women in that safe house uh, my class and how they commented through the week like uh, they kind of looking for were looking for what for the for the belly dance class and she told me that they really needed and well it was a really really good experience so i'm just gonna share the screen again because i have this um research thing uh, ta -ta -ta. keynote Sure. There you go. So uh, this is a study done in Australia in 2014. And the summary, uh, I'm just going to read out loud because I'm, I might be wrong if I don't. Um, they say belly dancers have fewer hang ups about their bodies. Most women who participate on, in this torso driven dance do so because it is fun and they get to perform interesting moves, not to be cause. Uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, not because they necessarily feel sexier while doing so, which is something women uh, have to endure in our whole life. Oh, what a um, coincidence, isn't it? We dance because we have to be sexy for others. So they did this uh, research on 112 belly dancers and they had a control group and, and they observed that um, belly dancers had fewer self-objectifying thoughts uh, and they just take what others might think about their bodies less to heart, like they didn't give a crap, actually. And yeah, and they were like more sure, more safe uh, about around the bodies. Uh, so this is the conclusion from the from Tigeman, who is the, the researcher. Belly dancing is an activity associated with positive body image because participants tend to focus less on their external appearance, as opposed as many other many, many people think, and more on the experience that they are able to do. What they are they able blah 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 blah. English is not my first language, as you can guess. Um they are able to do with their bodies. So it allows women a rare and safe and creative opportunity for exploring and expressing their sensual and sexual selves. Uh, and I really hope everyone is feeling safe here. So we're gonna dance a little bit more and we're gonna do, oh, hold on, I did the, ah, we're gonna do the figure of eight now because I did the camel before. So talking about the trays and the, like the movement that you leave behind, you're going to imagine you have imagine you have two pens on your hips and they are projecting or one of these laser like laser red dots that you use for conferences. This is a conference, isn't it? So let's imagine that. Project that image on the floor. Relax your knees. Remember that you never lock your knees all the way back. You always have them soft, and you're gonna draw a figure of eight on the floor or an infinite sign sign with your hips on the floor as well trying to isolate your body as much as you can yeah so uh, and this is something that really really important as well as in any other dance form but i like to be picky with this imagine you are in a very cool very cold swimming pool with the water up until this level so you don't want the water to go any higher you have to purely move on this plane, on the plane of the water, yes? Yeah? So you go to one side and the other side, we cannot go too much into detail, you, you use your knees in a way that allows you to go side to side without going any deeper in the water because you don't want the cold water to touch your body there, okay? So that's it, you go, I'm just gonna give you my back, diagonally to the front, and then you do a curve to the back, 
Now with your other hip, you go diagonally to the front and curve to the back. Diagonal and curve. Diagonal and curve. And as I said before, we are isolating. We are isolating the upper body and the lower body as much as we can. So we are projecting this sign, infinite sign of figure of eight on the floor. There you go. You can also go on the opposite direction. So you can do a diagonal to the back and then do this little curve to the front and diagonal to the back and curve to the front. And if you isolate this movement, you would be moving your hip only and not your upper body. Yeah, so this is called figure of eight or reverse figure of eight. Let's come back to the screen. Cool. As you can see, it's all about leaving traces behind and it's all about being soft. It's a very like curvy, soft dance form. And it, this applies to the camo, also to the hands movement. It's got a lot of this softy, wavy, that's it. But it also can be very sharp depending on the music. Um, okay, let me carry on with this. I'm just gonna share the screen again for this second study that I would like to share and check the time. Amazing, we are doing fine. Uh, um, so, this is a study in effectiveness of belly dance in patients with fibromyalgia in Sao Paulo in 2009. Um, you know, fibromyalgia is very related to trauma. It's like, a, like well, it, it could be, I mean, I just say like, it is. Uh, it's been research, it's, it's an investigation, but I'm quite sure. They, they did this study in female patients with fibromyalgia between 16, uh, sorry, 18 and 65 years old. And they taught them twice a week uh, belly dance for 16 weeks and then for 32 weeks. And they also had a control group and they measure a lot of differences in between the control group, the 16 and the 32 weeks with these women. They measure things like the ability to walk or how long they could work in six minutes, uh, the depression levels, the anxiety levels, the uh, self-image. Uh, it's, it's, and if you see like there is, the link is just down there. So if you wanna follow and see the results, I'm just not gonna go into that because it's not, it's not my topic, but they saw um, a general improvement on the health of these women, and especially in mental health, body image, emotional aspects, social aspects, vitality, the pain decrease, they had less physical limitations, and the six minutes walk text, uh, test was uh, like really, really improved. Like you can see the levels if you follow the link which uh, bring us to the question of, is belly dance the only dance form that does that? Or, cause you can debate, no? You could say, well, actually, if you do any, on, any kind of mild exercise or other, other dance form, it's like, what is special about belly dance? And yeah, that's true with mild exercise, you can also get very, very similar results, but belly dance has got something that is special for it. In the, in the link with trauma, which is what I'm talking about. So um, for people who don't know this, I'm just gonna say it. We have, as I like to explain it, we have two bodies. We have the physical body, our body with our arms, legs, and then we have the brain map, which is the second body, the brain map of our body. This is what I call the second body, the first one, the physical one, and the second one. As a, result, uh, as a result of a tra traumatic experience, uh, we often find that some parts of our body, the, the brain map one, have been erased or have been seen as the cause of the problem, even been uh, the source of pain, or they have been neglected or rejected or even mistreated. There is a lot of uh, self-harm around trauma and and of course, and I'm not gonna, as I said before, I'm not gonna go into detail with this, but there are also many emotional consequences of, of trauma uh, and many difficulties that and around situations and many consequences 
about situations that women have to endure just because we are women like we can we can be um we can we can choose in between being a virgin a slut or a sexual animal uh there's a lot of yeah i mean we don't have more choices than that three you cannot be the three at the same time hmm? if you're a mom you cannot be the other thing if you are it's it's so crazy and that that puts us woman either with a traumatic experience or not but this like this is increased in people with traumatic experiences which come a lot from social issues uh we, that put us in like in a in a place of full disconnection with our body or partial disconnection depending on the woman uh, so the special thing about belly dance is that it's done in safe spaces which is usually in women only settings so you don't have the predators there as your brain interpret men if you have if you have been a victim of sexual abuse and you see a man whoever it is that guy is and you can freak out you could freak out it's like no 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 this is not good for me so uh if you are just surrounded by women like you kind of allow yourself to relax and just move move your body just for the sake of the movement just for the joy of it um and also the social side in belly dance in particular is really really important and it's really well developed i honestly don't know any dance form and i might be ignorant so that's that might be the reason that i don't know but i don't know any dance form in which um in which they do gathers just to dance one for each other apart from break dance in this kind of like urban settings we actually organize what is called half last just to dance once for each other uh belly dance movements are pretty much pelvis related so um, that tackle sometimes sexual taboos and body resistances but from a very indirect approach because belly dance is not about sex no dance is about sex or only about sex even in the if they in, uh, in their origin they kind of were a seductive dance or they've got like, dance have got many layers it could it could like sex could be one of the layers but it's not the only one and and certainly these pelvic movements and this pelvic center movement uh, help us to map up to map the like the brain map the second body that i was talking before uh and that includes our pelvic floor and our genitalia which for uh domestic violence which usually comes with uh sexual violence or sexual abuse and with like refugees who've mo like most of them have been raped in in their in their way to this country uh it's like it's a really important bit of them that has been like taken away from them uh belly dance has, helps accepting one's body as it is because in a belly dance class you usually show your belly kind of or not it, some people do it some people don't i've seen women with like big scars in this be in, in their belly like coming from big surgeries you know you see a student coming into the class like hiding like no oh, no and then they end up just showing i have a lot of stretch marks and like, my own experiences my stretch marks is like fine my tummy my fat my stretch marks is not it's not a big deal it doesn't like it's, it, we don't push on that direction at all and you dance with women who are like you as we call uh, like I don't know how how to name this because everyone is normal and, and abnormal at the same time, but yeah, regular people like you, you know, you don't dance with like supermodels that represent. Uh, yeah, they, they. I mean, you might dance with a supermodel, but but it's just a percentage of the population, you know. So you get mixed with people who is on different body shapes. <laughs> the music and the movements in belly dance are very gentle. And they are very music, especially for Westerners, is amazing because it's it's such a discovery because the scales, the music scales, and that's like really, really um food for brain, basically, because you have to get used to listen to a like completely different kind of music. And yeah, and the movements on belly dance, as you have practiced, like the camel, the figure of eight, and all of these ones, they help, they have like this. I don't like to say too much like feminine and masculine, 
uh, but we know we're talking about because we've been raised in the same in the same kind of society. Uh, so yeah, they've got like these womanly components that help develop confidence and help reveal self-esteem. Being a woman is cool, but in this society, it sucks. So this is just a way to <laughs> a way to get away of that. And as a good friend of mine says, the archaeology of belly dance is in its own movements. So we don't have documents, but we have the movements. We have a lot of mums giving birth using these movements intuitively. I actually use, for example, the figure of eight to calm period, period cramps, period pain. Uh, and the base of belly dance is pure relaxation. So that's on the other side of the spectrum of stress, like chronic stress and like chronic anxiety and like this uh, crazy trauma response we have. So there is a lot, there is a lot. And yeah, this about like giving birth and period pain and all that stuff in this particular case is only anecdotal evidence what I'm talking about, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I've, I've been teaching for 20 years and I really know so many cases of people like, mom, like moms that like pe women that came to my classes wanting to get pregnant. No, of course not in my classes, but <laughs> they wanted like, I'm looking for a baby. I'm looking for a baby and, and trying and trying and not being able to then signing up to belly dance classes. And after two, two, three, four months getting pregnant, finally the pregnancy they were looking for. And that, that comes from just practicing. Like, I mean, as I said, it's anecdotal experience, but it is that it happens. And yeah, as as I said, the baseline to any belly dance movement is relaxation. So we're going to get relaxed now with a shimmy, which is a fun movement. It's like people usually giggle while they learn how to do this one. So for that, I'm just going to show my belly. <laughs> You're going to stand up again. And the movement just consists on bending and extending your knees alternatively. So one, two, one, two, one, two, as fast as you can, as slow as you need to, because you don't want that movement to go all the way up your upper body. Yeah, it's centered on your pelvis. So some people, when they do, when they do this movement, then they have to face the fact that they have a fat layer. Wow, what a discovery. And we have to make friends with that. We have this fat layer and we have this fat layer and this one. Some people don't have it, but it's okay. I mean, either way. And it's also a movement that comes from full relaxation. It's a movement that you cannot do if you are tense. Yeah. So if you take it as a bubble bath, as a jacuzzi, instead of feeling it like a earthquake, I think you cannot see my face there. Instead of feeling it like a earthquake, if you take it like a ah, relaxing jacuzzi, then you start enjoying the movement and then you start feeling relaxation in this movement. Once you are relaxed and don't get frustrated because some people take months to learn this movement. So it's totally fine if you get like stuck, uh, 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 it's fine. Just keep on trying, as I said, as fast as you can, as slow as you need to. Just keep on bending, extending your knees, cool. And once you have done this and once you have, once, once you have get like to this uh, relaxed point, you can start layering it with a figure of eight, for example. Isolating, remember that. And also we don't have music, we don't need music because I, we have an internal rhythm. So I'm just bending and standing my, my knees on rhythm. Tak, 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 yeah. Relaxing the upper body. Or we can also try and mix this with a camel, layering this movement with a camel, the one that we did before. Again, don't get frustrated. This is difficult. It's, it, it takes time. It's a lot of coordination and a lot of learning. But just the sake of trying it is relaxing. Well, some people get very frustrated and they don't relax at all. But <laughs> so yeah, that's the shimmy. And that's one of the main uh, movements in belly dance. Um, one of the principal ones, fundamental movement. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's what I wanted to share about the belly dance uh, thing, but I'm just gonna share something from myself, from my own work, if that's okay. So cool. 
So if you fancy a flight into the belly dance universe, <laughs> uh, if you like, and this is a projection, this is a sentence that I wrote a, a while ago, but I love it. If you like dancing more than chocolate, this is me <laughs> projecting into other people. But if you don't have any belly dance experience or you don't have any dance experience at all, um, then I have a, a program called Belly Dance with the Moon, which is 29 days to start belly dancing. And it's a really cool program that I, every day I send you a little video tutorial on a very specific small topic. It's not gonna take you more than 10 minutes. I send it to you straight to your WhatsApp and, and a little message, inspirational message. So you have me on WhatsApp. We also have during the whole moon cycle, which is 29 days on average, 29 and a half. But during the whole moon cycle, you, you have two, online meeting with group uh, with me groups so you can like answer your questions and the program is thought is like i designed this uh so every week every we start in the warning moon and every week we go through like this first week is all about the feet and the earth and how we feel that the second week is all about the pelvis and how we move that third week is all about the arms then the fourth week because it's the full moon we have the whole coordination so it's like, it's a very poetic, metaphoric way of putting belly dance together. I really like it. And it's usually 39 pounds, but for the embodiment conference, I did a discount code, which is TAC2020. I'm just gonna share the screen so it can be seen. And they can find this in my, oh, where is the screen sharing thing here? They can find this in my website anywhere. So that's the code T. EC 2020, which is valid until the next uh, one in moon, which is when we start uh, the next program. And say this, I just would say thank you. Dancers don't need wings to fly. So I hope you enjoyed this flight with me. And yeah, get in touch at any point in my website, dancepandemy.com, write me an email and feel free to ask me any questions. You Laura or anyone at any point. <laughs> I'm going to ask you some questions because we have more time. Yeah. And there are things that I'm really curious about. So, um, so this moon cycle, uh, just for you and your body, have you noticed like certain rhythms or patterns or within belly dance or within life in general that really fit in? Because I think that this is something we haven't spoken a lot about women it's you know traditionally it's changing now but been a very shameful thing to talk about our periods all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. we get to pretend nothing's happening you know so can you talk a little bit more about that relationship between the moon cycle being female and your experience with that yeah well it happens and i don't know if this is a coincidence but usually like the menstrual period in a woman on average is we've been told it's 28 days but that's not true it's 29 on average and that's the average uh, length of a moon cycle so i don't know what the scientific evidence on this is but as, as i said anecdotal evidence as well i have noticed in myself that my menstruation tends to come towards the full moon i have like every month is different i could have cycles of 26 27 or 32 34 days length but when there is like a, a, a full moon getting close, I usually get this, that like my menstruation on the full moon. And around the taboo around menstruation, uh, I would say there is really, I mean, we have ho hormone changes. Like we have a lot of, like a lot of things going on. And also in menopause, like there is a lot of things going on there on our bodies. And this society is designed and is done by men for men. So we, as women, we, we, we live in a cyclical world. Like if anyone knows in this world that every, everything is cyclical, like the, like the seasons, that's women. I mean, every month is a new story for us. And through these hormonal changes, we also experience emotional and we also experience changes in our emotional being and how sensitive we are for certain things and how... And it's a pity, and, and, and I'm just gonna make like a little bit of a <laughs> thing here. It's a pity that we see ourselves as, as like victims of a syndrome, like premenstrual syndrome or something like that. When we are like 
when we are premenstrual, maybe we are a little bit more sensitive and we really don't like the things that we usually are done and we usually have to cope with during the whole month. And when we are premenstrual, it's like, fuck you, no way. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy that, you know? And that's considered a syndrome. Mm. So what I have noticed in my own experience since I started body dancing, which was long ago, I have relaxed myself a lot more. And I am more like allowing myself just to be myself and to move as I am. And as a teacher, I teach, I teach full time. I, well, now I teach part time because of this situation, but I used to teach full time. And as a full time teacher, I feel those changes, those menstrual changes in me. And you present yourself to the class on a different, it's a different me. It's me, but it's, it's like I have four me's, you know? And depending on who I am, I behave more and I dance more and I move more on one direction or on the other direction. Maybe I'm more sensitive, I'm more, I'm more like poetic, I'm more diva or drama, or I am more like powerful. And so yes, definitely there is a relationship there. It's very abstract for me, but it is there. It's, it's as when you have a dream and you wake up and you remember that dream and it's got a meaning for you. It's abstract, but it's there and you can feel it. It's kind of the same thing. And I share this experience with many other women and they agree. So there's something there, actually. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So here's another question. And I know that in your work that this may not be so much of a thing, but I do know men who belly dance. And is that can can you speak to that just a little bit? So we're really inclusive. Actually, I have some good friends that have just started belly dancing with men. <laughs> totally, totally. So uh yeah, I have two two visions on this. I really, I'm really inclusive and I really men belly dancing. But from my personal experience, what has happened is that the only man who belly dances in a class ends up being the king of the class, okay. as it happens outside. And it's like, why? It's only what if if I, me as a woman go to one class full of men, I'm not gonna be the queen of the class. Well, I might, but <laughs> no, no, just joking. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna be considered, and I'm, I'm not gonna be like. But if a man dance, belly dance, he's like, whoa, he's amazing. He's a, like the proportion of men, of, of male belly dancers and female belly dancers is so different that I think it is unfair once more that men are more represented in the belly dance world than women because they are like the, the, the percentage of women is way bigger than the percentage of men. That said, I say, I have to say that there is also another layer there, which is men confronting themselves, especially heterosexual and educated on that, like confronting the, the, themselves with this feminine or so-called feminine movements or like feminate. And that might be triggering for them. Like, wow, I do have, why do I have to move this way? Like, am I behaving as a woman? So if a, if a heterosexual man is brave to join a belly dance class, then that's amazing. At the same time, it's a, tropi it's, it's a tricky topic because when you have, and in my personal experience, we, when you work in, a, in an environment that you want to make that safe for the women you are working with, you have to be exclusive. In that particular case, I'm like, I've had men, uh, students, men, and they, uh, they understand anyway. I mean, if they don't understand, there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, I love belly dancers. I love like men belly dancers, male belly dancers. <laughs> yeah, I think you're absolutely, I mean, this is very true in the dance world that it, it tends to be that the attention gets shifted toward the males in the classes, but I have found that in pole dancing, that is not the case. Mm. So, so it's interesting to see how it shifts around in different, different styles and different, different dances. Um, so what about music? Tell me about your favorite music to dance to. I love uh, Natasha Atlas. <laughs> it, it, like, it's, it's like, is my one of my favorite uh all the music she does is amazing i use it a lot in my classes in my videos in my life i recommended her a lot i love omar farouk mm -hmm. i don't know if you know him and then there are some like pop singers uh that are really really useful to use in class it's not they are not necessarily my favorite music to listen to but they are really catchy music like really easy to understand for the western ears mm -hmm. like Khaled, Chep Khaled. I saw I saw him in New York at the Beacon uh -huh. in the theater it was amazing. Yeah so this kind of music I mean what's I, the best email to reach you at? It's hola 
H O L A, hola in Spanish, <laughs> at dancepandemic.com. Okay, great. So I'm sure that they can put that in the link for, for you. And we do still have a few more minutes. Um, let me ask you in your in your work, what have you found to be the most challenging? With students, as I like in, in this work with the with the domestic, um, yeah, people being triggered. People being triggered, like women being triggered, and like so, tr uh, it's really challenging. Challenging to to help someone to feel safe enough to dance and join a dance class. So I have had to, to many times. I have I have had to invite people just to sit down and watch the class to see that nothing weird, nothing bad was happening there. While I was teaching the class, maybe to two students. So two women in the class and three watching the class because they were not quite sure of joining it and then joining it halfway through the class. That's challenging. Also, also people like I remember one experience where of I, so with the refugees, the thing goes like this. I go to their to their hostels in the like just before the dinner time or after the dinner time and I just approach the women around there they are all mixed there women and men and kids and everyone just queuing to get their dinner so I approach the women and I invite them to the class I introduce myself and invite them to the class and I have had some people telling me like why are you inviting me to a class like that's not going to solve my problems you know I have to deal with this 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 and that and and like dancing is something so stupid and so silly for me so yeah that's challenging as well because that's like my the worth of my job i know it is helpful i know dance would help you a lot but you are not on that position and at the same time i know belly dance doesn't sort out anyone's problems you have to do the work yourself but it's a really useful tool and you're gonna feel better actually in one hour if you allow that to happen in one hour of just having fun with other women and listening to music so that was very challenging for me as well because it touched something that is very the imposter syndrome, I think dance teachers share, like, what am I doing this? What's, <laughs> what's the purpose of dancing? Like, uh, is there any useful thing to do? I just dance and I teach dance. Like, what is this for? What is this useful at all? You know, so yeah, that touched my, like- I my completely power. understand. Yeah. So yeah, um, so I'm going to just give them a little last chat to encourage people to, Go to the coffee breaks in between uh, sessions, check, talk to other conference people, talk to presenters, reach out to people. This whole thing is about community. It's about building community, creating community and finding support through that community. And also, if you are, if you can, buy the whole package. It will support the presenters, it will support the whole conference and enable us to keep moving forward with this type of work in the world. So it's really important if you have the means to do that, to do that. Otherwise, enjoy the 48 hours of free for each of these sessions. So I'm going to come back to you with one final question, and it is, what is your golden nugget single sentence tip about embodiment? Ooh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> ah, single sentence about embodiment. I mean, embodiment is everything. <laughs> That's a good one. That's it. But it makes everything like it doesn't make sense not to embody your existence. Well, thank you so much, Sahida. Sahida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Good Good pronunciation. laughs> yeah, it has been lovely to talk to you and to meet you. And I I hope we encounter each other more in the world. I actually know a lot of belly dancers. So cool. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.